If you're browsing the various impulse response offerings out there, before you drop your hard-earned cash, I want you to stop and listen. You may already have the tools to make the stock cap in your modeler sound like that dream IR. And I want you to learn this trick so that you don't have to spend more money. You may have come across videos like this lamenting stock cabs. Now, let's hear the uh, stock cab. <laughs> I feel like I'm playing the bean pod. Yeah, we just jumped back like 20 years. In just to be clear, I have nothing against David Hislop or the idea of impulse responses. Indeed, in creating an IR, there's an entire signal chain of audio processing that is different from the one your modelers manufacturers used, resulting in a different sound. So buying an IR for the purpose of expanding your tonal palette isn't a bad thing. I just think that the unfortunate takeaway from IR marketing videos is my stock caps are trash. Before drawing that conclusion, let's hear exactly what's going on in the video in question. I extracted the audio of both the stock cap and the IR demo and I've arranged them back to back in this logic session. Right now, I have zero processing on the stock cap and IR demo clips. Let's play the stock cap, then the IR demo, listening with a fresh pair of ears. <laughs> To me, they are both usable tones, the stock cap sounding like it has meat, or the IR demo sounding like it has air and presence. Here's my question to you. Are you able to hear and articulate what's different about the two clips? Because being able to identify what's different about them is the prerequisite of the trick summed up in two letters, EQ. Here's what the stock cap can sound like if you apply EQ in post. <laughs> It's not 100% exactly like the IR demo, but it's in the same ballpark of high end sparkle. Here's what I did. I applied a high shelf EQ boost. A shelving EQ boosts or cuts all frequencies above or below a selected cutoff point. In this case, since the guitar cabinet has little to no frequency information from 8 kHz onwards, we know that the cutoff frequency should be below 8 kHz. And since we can hear that the high end is boosted, let's try somewhere around 6 kHz and boosting 3 dB. <laughs> It's definitely brighter than what we started with, but it doesn't have as much sparkle as the IR demo. Let's try bringing that cutoff frequency to something even lower, like 4 kHz and boosting 5 dB. <laughs> Now that's closer, but we can do something more. I'm hearing some resonance in the low end with the IR demo that's not as prominent in the stock cap. So I'm going to do something that Andrew Sheps does with the filter section in his Omni Channel 2. So if you imagine you've got a flat frequency response and then you start going down with a traditional high pass filter at whatever the slope is that you've set it to, what this resonance will do is to give you a bump before you go down. So the next thing we'll do is a two step process. Filter off what you don't need, like at 60 hertz, and then add a resonance peak to focus on the low end, like a small bell at 70 hertz with a 2 dB boost. <laughs> And now compared to what we started with, <laughs> the difference is night and day. Before we carry on, if this video is helping you, please hit the like button. It lets me know that this is relevant for you and YouTube sends it out to more people. Thank you for that. We can replicate this on Line 6 devices using the shelf EQ and the cut controls on the cab. For this example, let's load out the PV Panama and see what comes up loaded as stock. <laughs> We can hear that there's a lot of roundedness, which I suspect is coming from a ribbon mic. Yep, it's a ribbon. Let's choose a bright and punchy dynamic microphone instead, like the SM57, and I'm going to pull that back to 5 inches. I'm also going to add some early reflections, which will help with the liveliness. On the shelf EQ, choose 5 kHz on the high shelf and boost by 5 dB. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Now you want the cap to have power, so we will have the low cut on the cap set to 60 hertz. Come back to the shelf EQ and choose 70 hertz, then boost that by 2 dB. This is going to create that resonance curve, a bump at 70 hertz and then a filtering off. <laughs> Addendum. I personally don't prefer tones that have blistering high top end. When played through a sound system, it leads to some serious ear piercing moments. What we've essentially done with a shelf EQ was to adopt an additive EQ approach, that is to boost frequencies. I think it's much more musical to cut frequencies, which is the subtractive EQ approach. Here's how I would tweak the 5150 preset with a parametric EQ. <laughs> One EQ block could be what saves you time and money because they're able to sculpt the tone of the stock cap better. If you like what you're hearing, I've included this 5150 strap preset in the Podgo Worship Essentials pack because let's face it, we need some dad rock every now and then. Learning how to use EQs is a skill not just for producers or engineers, it's something that will pay serious dividends for the guitarist too. If you want to see more tone sculpting videos, I have one right here where I take the blank preset on the Podgo and sculpt it to be Sunday ready, complete with my approach to overdrives, delays and reverbs. I'll see you there.